number two, Robin's place of business. And she is doing some things that we usually see Jordan do. Like I was just saying all that shot calling and bossing and producing that Jordan was just doing. Now Robin is over here doing a shot calling and orchestrating all of the business of it all and she's sending off her home meal kits to the different charities and different people's and needs and desires and whatnot and she seems to be very passionate about this she seems to be very in her element as she's going through the activity of it all we get to see that she has a very good repertoire with her co-workers and employees and everything they seem to enjoy her energy she seems to enjoy theirs and even though she's in a position of authority to them this is her business it's her creation her baby okay they are able to interact with her as if they are I want to say as if they are equal. It's like, you know, they still respect her authority and her position. But they are not tensed up. They are not, like, you know, they don't seem irritated by her or anything. Like, a lot of people tend to feel about their bosses. And they also don't seem to feel a need to kiss her ass like we see Jordan's employees do with her. It, like if I didn't know no better, I would think Jordan was beating her assistant, okay? Because her assistant be seeming quite timid and like a little nervous around her. And like she feels like she has to compliment her and has to come off a certain way in order to not get snapped at by Jordan or, you know, in order to not get fired or whatever what have you. So I think these interactions, you know, it's the little things that show you the truth about people you know so i feel like this is definitely a redeeming quality about robin whereas she does have a good sense of humility whereas jordan has a whole lot of pride a whole lot of pride excessive pride the pride gets in the way even though we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna get too much because i'm gonna have to get on robin a little taste okay <laughs> So Harper shows up with support, some compliments, saying she looked good doing what she do, coffee, and a lot of questions in his back pocket. Okay? Before he gets to the questions, Robin thanked him for dropping off Mia to her play date. And he like, you know, my pleasure and everything as her father. I also want to point out this gesture you see here in this photo. Harper came in with two cups of coffee, which I assume were for him and Robin. But... He ever so generously hands one of the cups of coffee to one of the women who work in Robin's business. So like I said, little things giving you different indications on people's true natures and personalities and such. So, so after all these pleasantries, they kind of make their way on out the door gradually. And Harper is asking her about a great sum of money that's been taken out of the accounts and donated to a series of charities. And apparently it's more than usual. So he questioning her about that because apparently she didn't say nothing to him. And she basically giving him the energy like, you got it, all them royalty checks and all of that. You got it, you ain't worried about it. We make more so we can give more, which I feel her, but you still need to consult with your husband when you do stuff like this so this made me feel like she is doing things out of spite which i feel like is still not even like in the right neighborhood of things because harper does consult with her before he just goes about making drastic decisions but so he let her head it and he goes into asking her if she put any more thought into the house and she's like she don't want to talk about it in there so they went on outside to have the conversation and she's like it's not about the house or like anything specific on his end she just really don't want to move and she don't want to be removed from where she's been she want to stay around her people and let all of that and he kind of has to give her a wake-up call a bit about the gentrification that's going on and how her people that she so speak of is not really frequenting that area like they once did and i also kind of feel harper on the difference between living in uh, i don't know the exact correct term for what it is they live in um a loft um it's kind of like an apartment type situation it's not an apartment it's a brownstone 
it's y'all from the south so i can't remember what exactly they call those types of homes but it's not a house and it is different living in a house like i'm sorry i prefer a house um but uh I kind of understand where Robin is coming from. Like, it's her prerogative, but at the same time, I feel like she just kind of being deliberate because she really want to live overseas. <laughs> and she kind of starts to get frustrated with him and starts to shade him instead of what I feel like, instead of being honest about her true feelings, she decides to kind of go in on him and kind of say some of the same things that she said when they got into it after the whole protest thing, you know, Talking to him like he's just trying to keep up with the Joneses. He a clout chaser. Uh, moving on up. George Jefferson face ass. You know what I'm saying? And even though the Jeffersons were prosperous, right? Being called George Jefferson is not a compliment. Because George Jefferson was a bigot. Not only towards white people, but also towards his own people in certain ways. And he was very misogynistic. He was a very problematic character, okay? He was low-key, high-key, the representation of high yellow, high falutin, high on the hog, igra, you feel me? Um, so... Her, like, constantly referencing him in that way, that is not a compliment. That is deliberate. That is shade. And she was like, why can't we just be happy with what we have instead of trying to chase some elusive better? And, you know, that's also her, like, taking shots at his new ideas and the new ventures that he's trying to embark on and all of that. And I just feel like that's fucked up because I'm all here for if your mate is really in over their head and really delusional about their talents and their gifts and stuff like that and they trying to do stuff just because it can be done you know what i'm saying then yeah you said i'm like look i don't really think you know how jordan was telling lance this you know acting is not your thing this ain't what you need to be doing you don't even seem like you happy doing this that's 100 what i feel like robin is doing is projecting her own fears onto other people including her husband and ultimately being toxic okay one she is limiting herself and she wants him to limit himself because that's what she has made herself comfortable doing in order to make other people comfortable okay and i also feel like she's afraid that he really will be successful in that and then that'll be something else that takes more attention away from him and away from home which i understand but communicate that don't talk down on him and make it seem like he's incapable of what he's trying to do because he very much so is capable so the shit that you're saying is absolutely crazy just say you don't want that man to progress no more you want him to stay where he at so that y'all can settle and be comfortable and just be happy with what y'all got instead of trying to be mega rich just say that you don't really want to strive for that type of generational wealth just say that you don't want him to do it because you're really not really ready or willing to go that big with it. Just say that. Because all that other crap is bull crap. Ain't nothing wrong if you prefer a simple life. Regular, modest wealth. You know. Or you know what I'm saying. Because I, I wouldn't even consider their wealth. You know. Just regular. You know. They, they very well off. So I'm like you know. Do what you do. But. Stop. Stop fooling. You you acting. And she's like knew she did too much. So she told him that she would see him later. She was going over to Candies for their book club shit. So. Here we are at their book club shit. <laughs> and Jordan is still zoning about being dragged because, child, she's still getting dragged. <laughs> so this page called Shade House posted, Jordan Armstrong is hashtag no power, no loyalty. And Jordan calls them all coward ass clap back and Twitter finger wannabes. Shelby said, oh, girl, that's good. Need to tweet that. Let me do it. Candace like, girl, no, stop. Because, child, no, that wouldn't be good on Jordan's end. She just ain't in a place or in a position where she is able to do those types of things. And sadly, because of colorism, it would go way differently. Jordan getting online and clapping back like that versus Shelby getting online and clapping back like that. Plus, they expect it out of Shelby because Shelby is a housewife and Jordan is a media individual. But Jordan says she ain't gonna get him the satisfaction because she is the motherfucking boss. Overwrite. Now I'm gonna skip buck. Overbite. <laughs> Um, so Robin is steady trying to get them to focus on the book that she picked out for them. Apparently, it's about how racism and all of that affects, well, <laughs> oppresses the bag of black people, okay? So she keeps trying to get them to focus on discussing that and giving attention to that and all of that. And in the midst, they are more focused on 
discussing the social media beefage and the controversy of what Jordan has done and or not done as it concerns Anita's show, which I feel like is still a meaningful topic and necessary conversation. And I feel like maybe that's where Robin is also being kind of narrow-minded where she is kind of functioning and thinking like there is only one way of activism and there is only one way of fighting the issues everybody is not built to be out there on the front line holding picket signs getting dragged by the police going ham for their fam you know what i'm saying shout out to the people that do and thank them but everybody is not built for that some people are meant to write about it like harper some people are meant to fight about it online like the people dragging Jordan and Shelby. Some people are meant to call it out in the midst of girlfriend book club conversations to check their buddy and tell her that she needs to reevaluate herself in the way she handling certain situations that concern black women. And so low key, high key, the conversation is on point with the book because this is a conversation about how racism and misogyny, misogyny war, F's up. Black folks' bag, just like it's low key, high key, effing up Anita's bag, and it's starting to eff up Jordan's bag. Because honestly, too, if Jordan wasn't a black woman, a monoracial black woman at that, I'm sure she wouldn't be getting that much heat. Now, granted, she is a black woman, so you would expect her to have different responses to certain things but at the same time because she is a black woman there are a lot of people just waiting for a reason to go in on her and in the midst of this exchange candace is making faces like she got something on her mind and jordan calls her out and it's like what you got to say and candace is like i don't know you know like i said she even though basically puts it on her mind that she needs to reevaluate her decision because you would think that she would have done more considering that she knew how the public felt about anita and their show and what it means for black representation now i will say that jordan makes a pretty good argument when she's like basically what more do you want from me i segue her onto a all black woman show doing some of the same thing that she would have been doing on her own show but it's for the culture from the culture it's black women you know she feels like that is enough and i and like i said i feel like that's a pretty good argument i do feel like that was great for her to do i think maybe though she could still just acknowledge that maybe she didn't fight hard enough or maybe your clap back on twitter could be acknowledging the racial aspect and the misogynistic and massage noir aspect of what has happened all the while explaining your challenge in the situation without you know incriminating anybody explain your experience and your position being a black woman in your position at the same time how that affects your ability to really be able to satisfy all of the black needs and desires because while jordan is in a great position of power she still has to answer to people and those people that she has to answer to are predominantly white so they are also responding to her in quite toxic manners if you get what i mean so in actuality there is only so much that she could do and the fact that she was able to pull off what she pulled off was amazing honestly was a, a miraculous act honestly <laughs> but as robin instead of trying to get them to focus on the book shelby just has to tell her that baby we are not interested what this you're talking about okay let me go ahead and see if i can get my gold star from you so i can finish my drink in peace honey she skimmed through the book blah 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 want they want so basically you're saying racism messes up everybody's bed gotcha i put it in a tweet to my 1.3 million followers and jordan was like huh how many followers you got come again because jordan was also just saying how she's having a hard time filling the last seat on the show so, <laughs> watch and see, watch and see. And we see as we segue and transition into pre-production. Well, it's really ain't pre-production. This is the thing, honey. And um, Jordan is over there commiserating with her assistant, Nicole. And Nicole is boosting her head up as usual. But this time, she is noticing that Jordan is looking a bit withered and disheveled. And she is asking her if she needs anything. Jordan tell her to get us Madville and call it a day. So, Lance calls in the midst of that Benson again. Basically saying that he tired of coloring pictures. He tired of doing yoga. He's tired of living a soft life. <laughs> and Jordan's like, baby, can you please, like, find somebody else to vent to in the meantime? In between time, I am in the middle of production. I feel like Lance be, like, feeling like he's 
communicating with Mia vicariously through Jordan since they were best friends and all. That's, I'll say that's pretty healthy. But yeah, he could use a counselor, a therapist, you know. And that's basically kind of what she told him. Like, what is he giving? She said, baby, I am not in y'all of Zant. But this is also where I realized that Jordan's kind of side bitch energy, if you will, is actually wounded healer energy that I would say... She hasn't balanced out. And that's because her life doesn't have balance. Um, I'll explain more on what I mean by that in another video. So she ends up telling him, because she's trying to hurry him up off the phone, baby, because they fixing the start. And he's doing the most. So she tells him that she's going to send him a podcast that she's been listening to. And she hangs up. <laughs> and if y'all could have seen the look on his face, child. So baby, they say places, ready, action. The girls roll in. They are looking nice. You see, everybody else is looking business, regal, beautiful, and Shelby still looking like a housewife. Don't get me wrong, she's looking business and beautiful. It's just missing the regal and you know all that other stuff. Okay, it's a uh, housewife, you know. Uh, which I'm here for. I would accept it, but <sighs> the core audience, the core audience, the core audience, child. But of course, this is also where it is revealed that Jordan did indeed. Fill that last space with Shelby. <laughs> Which I think is perfect. It's also another instant where Jordan is going to have to work a miracle. <laughs> and Shelby's going to learn how miraculous she is. Mm -hmm. Hold that thought. We cut away to a scene with the guys having their poker night. And the topic of discussion is both happy wife, happy life. And about how and when to veer off of the traditional path. So, Harper is up here still raving about the house and the pasta faucet, talking about it's like a bidet for noodles, sir. That's not very attractive <laughs> when you're talking about food, especially. But he's excited, and honestly, I'm kind of excited too because the house sounds real nice. And I'm not a pasta, the pasta faucet sounds like interesting too. Maybe that's the Leo in me that like loves shiny stuff, big houses, and gadgets and stuff like that. But I don't see nothing wrong with what Harper's talking about. I don't understand why you can't, like, like nice things and have really nice things and be conscious and all of that at the same time. I feel like you can do both. Though, I do know why people think of Harper the way they think of him. Because he is, he do got clout, he got clout chaser energy like a mug. Um, so yeah. He tells the guys about Robin's concerns and Quentin, for the most part checks him and lance also says that you know you should listen to her she don't really just be saying stuff just to be saying it even though lately i feel like robin is projecting her miserableness all at the same time but like i said i'm seeing both sides and i do think that it's healthy for them to like bring that to his attention at the same time and quentin is for one showing a drastic change and growth in his character right because quentin Used to be very like, I'm going to do what I want. Fuck them bitches, fuck them hoes type shit. You know what I'm saying? And now he's talking happy wife, happy life. And the benefits of being disciplined and kind of staying on the path that your parents and whatnot set for you. And so he um, Harper is saying that Robin and his agent are making him feel insecure. I feel like he's dealing with his own insecurities, even though I kind of see what he's saying because his agent is very pushy and it's like, Harper, he works for you and you act like you work for him. You be just letting him push you around. And I feel like something about that has to do with his agent being a white man. And even though he works for Harper, Harper sees him as a white man. So there's this veil of superiority, you know? Um, it's like a mental, it's a mental thing. It's a mental bias. It's a subconscious indoctrinated thing where Harper may feel like he can't challenge him like this here because he is a white man and, or he may feel like this white man may really know best because he is a white man. And so there's that. And Robin is, like I said, being an ego buster. So he's not totally off with that, but the whole like point and what's really going on here is like, Harper got to be more secure in himself. And then people wouldn't think that he just being flighty and a clout chaser in this and that because Harper's own insecurities in himself is more than likely tied to him always feeling like he needs to get more and more and more and more and more because he's not being grateful and confident in what he already has. Therefore, he feels dissatisfied. He still feels this deprivation type of hunger. It's this lack mentality, which is attached to slave mentality, which, you know, again, makes sense why he will operate with his agent in the way that he operates with him being affected. His agent is a white man. 
and why he can't seem to get out of his own like mental internal imprisonment type shit and so he is talking about how he wants to write stuff that matters quote unquote and like i said earlier he mentions here baldwin and richard white people that he is aspiring to and like i said i'm wondering why harper can't do both like i originally thought that harper was seeking white adjacency but this conversation adds layers especially being the fact that he is mentioning the specific black writers authors speakers things of that nature you know what i'm saying I can't quite put my finger on it, but it does feel like Harper is giving some Pisces, two fish swimming in different directions as energy. So it's like he wants to be woke, but it also feels like he is being superficial about it. Or like maybe it's coming from a superficial place. Sometimes you have to work outside in. Sometimes. And I'm not gonna lie, I mean, Harper has shown that he's the type of person that if you put faith behind him and hold him accountable at the same time, he tends to blossom in very miraculous ways. So, there's that. He's a piece of work. He is. But, with support and, account and accountability, he, you know, it goes a long way with him. But, Quentin is telling him that it wouldn't be good, it wouldn't be a good idea, because if he wants to buy and maintain the house and the lifestyle that he has, then he really should stay in the bag that's working for him. And, again, this is low-key hockey. It's touching on how um, black women are some of the biggest consumers. Black women, a lot of times, spend the most money. And in this case in particular, they are his core audience. They are the biggest part of his audience, the most supportive part of his audience. So, and this is what it seems like to me, too. And I think I kind of touched on this earlier. Har Harper has the support of black women, which I think was his goal. And I don't even know if his goal originally was the support of black women or to be favored and desired by black women and now that he's accomplished that and to what can come with a man being favored by a whole lot of women is certain ignorant men thinking less of them which is totally backwards and definitely rooted in some hater shit <laughs> but it makes uh men like that who are highly favored by women Specifically, if they also are respectful to women and cater to women, a lot of men will beat them up about that, tease them, call them simps, and demasculate them. Emasculate them? Whichever one it is. Emasculate, demasculate, they be trying to attack their manhood and whatnot. And I think Harper is feeling that. And so him trying to now change lanes and do the Dr. Temple, Richard White, baldwin thing is him now trying to get validation from black men which again i don't see why he can't do both i see why but at the same time he's a unicorn right he's been very innovative he's made strides and been a trailblazer in his field right so he does have the potential to be a person that proves people wrong that you can do both and you can do it all he can cater to both black men and black women hmm. hmm but i know that the question is can he make money doing that i feel like he can especially now especially in the day of social media and you know people wanting variety and things of that nature i don't know i feel like it's, it's possible but i also get what everybody else is saying i definitely get what Quentin is saying too, which is why I feel like this is something that Harper should build up to. He should continue to do his, you know, black lady, quote unquote, catered work and also work on some like see how to mesh together those different things into one. So, yeah. So, y'all know Quentin is a Nepo baby. So he's telling them that like his folks paid away. They built up this great like legacy and all of that for him to inherit and he tried to do something completely different completely out of the path and damn near demolished the whole thing and now he's feeling like you know him and his company and his people they have to work twice twice as hard in a day to reach half of where they were <clears throat> in the first place and that makes me wonder too how much of that is attached to being black like you know because it kind of seems like black people have to be 
practically perfect. And even when they reach that state of perfection, they can maintain that state of perfection for decades, centuries, and then some. But the one little mistake, one little misstep seems like it can ruin all of the, you know what I'm saying, that black businesses credibility with the industry type shit. So just a thought that came to mind there. But yeah, that's Quentin, you know, letting Harper know and also letting us know how he had to learn a value of discipline and a value of legacy and culture and it's another word for that. It's another word for that. But basically, when your eldest is telling you to do something or your eldest then set up for something to work a certain way in order to be successful and you like, nah, fuck what you talking about. And then you have to learn the hard way. That's what that's what Quentin was uh, giving a bit. Because like definitely you need a little bit of everything. There's a time and a place for everything. So just like it's a time and a place to be liberated and free spirited and creative. It's a time and a place to replicate what's already been done. And. When it comes to meshing the whole thing, that's exactly why I feel like it would be perfect to write a story about Robin. <laughs> you don't wrote stories about your whole friend group and everybody else that you observe. It would be perfect. It would be woke and black lady catered and all of that. And it would have its romantic elements, its action elements, its dramatic elements and all of that. Even its food elements. <laughs> it's eat, pray, love and all of that. If you would write about Robin and that would be a great start in being innovative in his own originality <laughs> so yeah everyone is telling him that what he's trying to do seems like abandonment but he's not really interpreting it that way i don't think he's really seeing it clearly all he's saying is what he wants of course um and i may have mentioned this before but i'm gonna say it again um i definitely feel like this is also tied to harper having felt like a, a follower because he does take a lot of inspiration from the people around him so that's likely why he has clout chaser energy and he may feel like he's always being led and now he's like desperate to feel like a leader in his field or at least somewhere because even in his marriage he's driven a lot by robin he feeds a lot from her support and from her presence and all of that so yeah but um like i said this lack mentality he often doesn't realize the ways that he's already a leader <laughs> so yeah Merch is able to see it from his point of view because that's where they have that parallel of feeling deprived of a certain level of required manhood and masculinity and whatnot amongst most men and possibly amongst their friend group, which is interesting because they don't even seem to realize that the two guys that they have kind of been like looking up to on the masculinity front and like allowing them to invalidate their masculinity, if you will. Those two guys have literally adjusted and are in a state of adjusting to what Harper and Merch have already been doing. <laughs> and that's why I say, too, I don't think they realize how they are already leaders. <laughs> the two guys that's teased y'all for being respectable to women for getting married and being monogamous and settling down and being intellectual and all of that. They have now adjusted themselves for the sake of their happiness and for the sake of love and for the sake of surviving with a great quality of life is it uh, uh. <laughs> first they tease you then they imitate you <laughs> that also makes me pose the question what does it mean to be the best man and that will be another video for another time but as we get to wrapping this scene up you know, I said Merch spoke on how he relates to Harper and sometimes you just feel like you need something new to kind of get you going and get you to that next level. And Lance was second in that notion, saying how he can see both sides and how, you know, he's trying to get into his new path and, and get like comfortable, if you will, in his new path of passion. <laughs> and that's where Quentin, as he does best, breaks up like the seriousness and the watery emotionalness of the moment and slaps his winning cards on the table like you must be passionate about taking an ass whooping because that's what's going on here we get harper talking about it some light skin shit and i say every eh, time somebody say that i'd be like what you mean even though i know what they mean i still be like what you mean <laughs> what do you mean you people <laughs> and quentin teases merch about having to take his lunch money talking about he went in strong with two dollars and fifty cent do he got bus fare 
Yes, you better read. You better read. And I know Merch got more money than that, putting in $2.50. What is it giving? Child, bye. But they wrap up that scene, child.